What's going on guys? My name is Seth and a few years back I was in constant collaboration with Michael here on YouTube amassing millions of views that have since perished as you may well know. Last month I entered the short film competition My Road Reel, presented by Rode Microphones. You may remember that Michael shared this with you on the community section here on YouTube. Well, thanks to all of your votes, I am pleased to confirm and announce that I won the competition, and it is mainly thanks to all of you who voted through on that link which made that possible. I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart to every single one of you who took the time out of your busy days and voted for my short film. And in case you missed my winning entry, go ahead and check the description below for the link to that video, uh, drop a like on it, and let me know what you think of it as well. Now as a special thank you to the Lost History Channel that I worked on years ago, and to what we are trying to achieve on this channel, well, just wait till you hear this. So what exactly are the pyramids at the Giza Plateau? Answer, nobody knows. A commenter in one of our recent videos said that every time she hears that the Great Pyramids were constructed as tombs for the pharaohs, her blood pressure goes through the roof. The feelings are definitely mutual. We know that it is logically impossible for these things to be tombs, yet in educational systems across the globe they still teach this as if it is the word of God. It's ridiculous. How the hell can the most elaborate constructions on the face of the earth be tombs? This is constantly being regurgitated time after time, as though it is matter of fact, when in actual fact, this could not be further from the truth. It is based on absolutely no facts whatsoever, and believe it or not, it's just a wild guess to what the would-be explorer imagined it to be from a preconceived idea. Why is it that when our educators teach these lies, it is not also mentioned that this is just a theory of what was believed hundreds of years ago? This was the first thing Westerners came up with as to what these ancient things are, and it's stuck. The Great Pyramids are completely bare. There are no hieroglyphics inside. Why? Because the dynastic Egyptians did not access them. They never found a way in. Unlike most of the other monuments and structures claimed by the dynastic Egyptians via the form of hieroglyphics, the Great Pyramids never fell victim to such exposure. They were sealed pre-flood and survived the period of Egyptian history that we refer to as ancient. But these things existed much, much earlier before the Great Flood. For centuries they have begged us to figure out just what they are as they stand permanently on the Giza Plateau. Built to last the ages, built flawlessly by a civilization who envisioned this project, and in which is almost beyond human comprehension, certainly a deep and mysterious matter with no obvious conclusions but we do have theories of what these things could be. The Great Pyramid, for example, has an estimated weight of close to 7 million tons. The base of the Great Pyramid is 14 acres, and it is 450 feet tall, as you may well know. But what does that mean exactly? 400 miles away in Aswan is where the quarried rock comes from. This means that they would need to transport and lay one 30-ton stone block every two minutes for 25 years without any break transporting to 400 miles, one block per boat. Imagine the congestion on the Nile River. This of course is based on the technology we assume they used to construct this ancient wonder with. Everything about the pyramids at Giza scream work of the gods, a civilization that existed on this earth and one we now consider a myth because it mostly survived orally before the stories were retold and redocumented after the ancient cataclysm. Here is a thought. The Hoover Dam hides an intriguing secret connecting sky to ground and past to present, using very much the same as above so below system of measuring time deployed at Giza around the Great Pyramid. Located on the Nevada side of the Hoover Dam is an awesome monument dedicated to over 100 workers who lost their lives to the construction of the huge machine known as the Hoover Dam and power plant. Visitors are impressed by the two huge sculptures and the beauty of the base with inscriptions, but only few will notice that the monument sits atop a floor designed to look like a celestial map. The celestial map is embedded in terrazzo floor around the monument. It is a beautifully executed representation of the night sky for a specific day and time, and it includes many decorative features, which include astronomical markings and curious labels. Back in the 1930s, when the floor was designed, only an astronomer could have made sense of this information. But today, thanks to the computers and applications, this knowledge is available to the average person who desires and determines to learn. While we are on the subject of the Hoover Dam, we thought you may find this fact interesting. 
On December 20th, 1921, a crew surveying locations for the dam got caught in a flash flood, and a man named John Tierney was lost forever in the raging Colorado River, one of the first casualties of the project. Then on December 20th, 1935, 14 years later to the exact day, the job site suffered its very last fatal accident. When a worker fell to his death from one of the two intake towers on the Arizona side of the Black Canyon, that man was Patrick Tierney, John Tierney's only son. Their names appear in raised metal on a plaque near the dam, never to be forgotten. The fact that we today are discovering ancient science and ancient secrets by means of modern technology is the present meeting the past and the past meeting the present and the future. Wouldn't you agree? That's it for now, guys. It has been my absolute pleasure to make a brief return to the Kepler Telescope channel after a few years away, and I have one last request. If you have liked what you have seen and heard from me in this video, then please can you click through on the link in the description and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you like anything relating to short films, photography tips and tricks, and tech reviews, that channel is for you. I have worked passionately and hard over the years on YouTube, but it is a tough nut to crack. I need 1,000 subscribers so I can make a few bucks each month from the content that I take the time to film and produce. If we can make that happen, then I will happily provide a few more voiceovers for the videos on this channel. Once again, my name is Seth, and thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button on this channel, and then subscribe to my personal channel, which is linked in the description below. Please leave all comments, questions, and concerns in the comment box below, and I look forward to reading every single one of those. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.